of the two. Uh, man, all the doubt we might have had about some teams, I think it's gone. Thunder for real, 1-0. SGA uh, had his 29-9 and 9 assists. Jalen Williams, he was 10 of 18. Uh, in the third quarter, 10 of his 18 points were in the third mm. quarter, I should say. Luca, a weird night for Luca with the 19 points, 6 of 19. That's that's an odd one. So we'll start with SGA here. Um, there are some good names in this series, but is he the best player? Uh, he damn sure was last night. And with his size and his ability to create, they can't put Kyrie Irving on him because he's too small, right? So I uh. think the Mavs' best bet is to have, you know, a Derek Jones, someone with length on him that can at least make it more difficult. Because when he gets in the paint, he basically backs these smaller guards down. He's a mismatch nightmare. And then you go to a P.J. Washington where he's too quick and he's got to play back on him and he can shoot the three ball. Uh, his finishing last night was insane. When he's knocking down shots like this, he's one of the tougher <clears throat> guards in the NBA to guard. And obviously, Luka is, is Luka, but yeah, SGA is, either, we're going to find out tonight, is either the MVP or the runner up of MVP, oh, true. most likely. So it's hard to not say he's not the best player, but you got to <clears throat> give Luka his flowers as well. But last night, it wasn't even close. It's it's uh, it's kind of crazy that these teams are for real. Lou, what did you think watching this series, this first game? Listen, I'm doubling down on something I've been saying all year on this great day of the 8th. Shea Gilgis Alexander will be named the MVP later on today. I'm doubling down on my stance. I'm doubling down on my take. And this game helps prove my point. He's been one of the best players in the game. His impact has been huge for this basketball team. Granted, they have a lot of young guys that's putting numbers on the board that's having a positive impact on his basketball team. But Shea Gilgis Alexander is the best player on that team. He's the best player in this series. Last night was a great indicator of, of things to come, and I got him as my MVP. So that's my opinion. I, I think he's the best player, by not by far, in this, in this series. But he's up there. He's the number one I guy. Will, he's like a shout real mystery. out Lou Will, because he called SGA in yeah. training camp yep, that he, he did. was going to be the MVP. October. So hell of a pick, Lou. Yeah, it's, well, it's not done yet. But yeah, but yeah, still, the fact we'll that he's one, of the, he's one of the two. Um, I'm, top, I'm, top, I'm top two at least. You are top sure. two at top least. Top two at least. Yeah, and you didn't go with like an easy pick. And you were listening to Shibuzi yesterday and getting your country music. Yeah, and we so. will get to <laughs> you that. You see that? You like that? No. Nope. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on Lou I'm Will this morning. No, I didn't like it. And we will get to that a little bit later <laughs> on the show. Uh, Shams, other than the crowd just being all bought in, and I love that they all sported their T-shirts, uh, what was your big takeaway? I mean, Luka Doncic, uh, this is another series where we saw it against the Clippers. He got off to a slow start in that series as well. Six of 19 last night, one of eight from three. And in, in the past series, you saw him elevate his game, but also the others around Luka Doncic stepped up. So I don't know if it's just the first game jitters. The Mavs as a whole, as a franchise, they've lost five game ones in a row over the last few seasons. So having uh, another game to kind of feel out Oklahoma City, uh, and, and we'll see how they go into game two, but they are going to need other players to step up. P.J. Washington, Derek Lively, Kyrie Irving, Daniel Gafford. Like, those guys will have to take another step, but it starts with Luka Doncic. And how can he step up? Because there were times where... Um, some of the shots that he was taking, uh, the shot attempts were a little off, obviously, uh, shot selection. But seeing him take his game, he's got to come uh, to this series at, at a really high level, especially if they're going to beat Oklahoma City. And another fellow MVP uh, finalist in Shea Gills, I was saying. It's kind of crazy. Look, it, 19 is his tied for his okay. second fewest points in a, in a playoff game um, after the game. A lot of questions to answer, one of them about his knee. Here he is. Who cares? We lost. We just gotta move on to the next one. I gotta be better. Uh, we gotta be better. What? Well, that was quick. What? No, it's funny because we didn't know they were gonna pay it back to. Yeah, because like, we're like, what? Um, I mean, listen, he, when it's you not, when you watch him physically, it, yeah. it doesn't look like he did in the first series, but that, that's no excuse. And also, credit Oklahoma City Thunder. Lou Dort is, is a very good defender. And then they have guys like Kaysen Wallace, who we haven't even talked about much, the 10th pick of the draft. He is a great long defender. So they just basically took turns, uh, you know, giving him different looks. And, again, it's not like he did anything different last night. He took these these long step-back threes that he usually makes and we usually praise him for, for those <laughs> shots. So when he has an off night like this, you just almost have to credit the defense, credit maybe he's banged up, he didn't have the lift that he usually does. His knees clearly bothering him the way he was, you know, hobbling around. But again, everyone's going through that. Every team has went through an injury, whether it's, whether it's Kawhi or Joel or 
Butler, Jimmy Butler, every player's star player has been banged up. So we can't point to that the one time he has I an agree. off shooting night. Those are the shots that he always takes. I think you can just credit Oklahoma. They made it difficult on him. They put smaller guys on him, stronger guys, bigger guys. And I think that you, they once he's, his shot wasn't falling, he does have to do things differently. He's got to adapt. He's trying to, got to get other guys involved because the Mavs are very good offensively. But when they're all struggling like this, Kyrie showed flashes a little bit in the second half last night. But when everybody's struggling, they have the capability to defend, but they're not that team that, like the Minnesota Timberwolves, that can hang their hat on, on, de on the defensive end. So yeah, I mean, when everybody has an off night, Offensively, it's tough for this team to win. Eight fewer points last night than he's had basically averaged in his last five. And I do appreciate that he didn't try to make an excuse of the injury because, like you said, and everybody's hurt. If they're even playing at this point or, or you're just hobbled. Lou, are, are you happy with his answer? Do you think he'll figure something out between games one and two? Yeah, that's what you want to hear from, from, your, from your leaders. In a in a in a group, my my pitcher's killing me because it's like crooked. I feel it's throwing it's me out. Anyways, me too, it's killing me too, Lou. It's killing me too. I I take it down and I take it down at the break. <laughs> but this is what you want to hear. He he hadn't made any excuses for himself. Hadn't made any excuses for the team. You know they got they got down early. This Oklahoma City team had a lot of motivation playing on their home floor, and they play like it. And we've always talked about who they are on the defensive end. This team takes pride in stopping guys that can put numbers on the board. They take pride in, in getting stops, take pride in playing defense at a high level. Luka Doncic was a victim of that. I'm sure he'll make his adjustments and, and come back and be ready for game two. But, you know, like you mentioned at the, at the top of the show, Michelle, this, this Oklahoma City team is real. All doubt is off the table about them and what they're, what they're able to do on a defensive end and offensive end. And Luka's running into that. And I'm sure he'll make adjustments and Kyrie will be better. And this is going to be an exciting series to, for games to come. But, you know, game one, it was, it was all OKC. And he was one for eight from the three-point line. That doesn't happen it's often. But again, these shots he's taken, they're, they're low. They're low percent shots but he usually makes these and once he gets going he makes one or two that's when you see the onslaught of his offensive firepower kind of explode but where's Tim Hardaway Jr you know this guy he was so important to their team last year that that he's now he's I know he's banged up he was hurt he was in and out of the lineup but now he was that guy that was kind of their third guy and ever since the PJ Washington move um, and other and other moves that he, he's just kind of taken that role just so much smaller and smaller where he's mm. gonna be one of those guys that are gonna get wide open shots the way that they guard Kyrie the way they guard Luca Josh Green Tim Hardaway Jr these are the guys that are gonna get open looks and they have to knock him down let's talk bench a little bit because uh, that Thunder bench outscored the Mavs bench 42 <clears throat> to 23 uh, is that are are they that much deeper a team? It's crazy because I didn't think they were going to go that deep. Like most teams shorten their rotations in the playoffs. You look at Tibbs, mm -hmm. look at the Knicks, they play seven guys. Like they're playing Casey Wallace, Wiggins, Isaiah Joe, and all of them, the other Jalen Williams, by the way, who's a solid player who could step out, it's hit crazy. a three last night. Uh, I love Isaiah Joe. I think he's a valuable player that one Two of the other names. teams that, yeah, like a, a Clippers or, or a Suns team could really look at a guy like him where he can stretch the floor, he can space. But, yeah, look at look this. At just look at this setup. They're, they're all inexpensive. They're all hardworking. They all play defense, too. A lot of teams, when they're this young, all they want to do is score points and watch the threes. This team is all bought in. They're all on the same page. And it's crazy just the rotations and how deep they can go with the youth that they have is not normal. That's a, that was a crazy graphic, by the way. Um, can we talk a little Jalen Williams here? Because he had 10 in the third. Kyrie and Luka combined to score seven in the fourth. And I think a lot of times when you have young teams like this, we're, we're wondering how are they going to come out? Are they going to be nervous? Are they going to do things they don't normally do? 23 years old did not seem bothered. No, an absolute dog. And, and, and it's crazy because the announcer during the game was talking about how he's only had 10 points, he's only had 10 <laughs> points, he's struggling. And he just went nuts. He faces you up. He's got such a good handle and just like a shift to his game. He finishes, he's strong. Uh, he's a mismatched nightmare and he's on his way to absolute stardom. And all year long, he's been great in the fourth quarter, which is unbelievable for a guy like SGA, who's clearly their best player. He's their guy. But yeah. when you have a guy that can relieve pressure, that can put the ball in his hands, make plays, make guys around him better, but also go get you a bucket, it, it does wonders for SGA's game and for this team's game. So Jalen Williams, watching him play, I don't even know who to compare him to because he's so smooth, he can shoot, he's strong. Look at that. It's an insane That's finger roll off silly. the glass. This just finishing off the opposite foot. Like the kid can do it, every, can do it all. Um, and he makes big plays and he's always kind of that guy when a team starts making a run and a team starts getting, uh, you know, some bu easy buckets. Jalen Williams is the guy that kind of stops the momentum. They were having fun. Lou, did you fix your picture? I did. 
How you? What, now it looks like you're in trouble. <laughs> you somewhere. guys look okay? Uh, I like it. Right <laughs> yeah, drop my charger. Yep, drop the charger. Yeah, are you? Are you? Uh, I don't want to say surprised. Maybe impressed by the youth of this team and the fact that no one seems flustered. Yeah, we were surprised months ago. Hmm. At, at this point, they're the real deal. And and this OKC team, they're getting a lot of great production from a lot of different guys. Chet, Jalen Williams. Uh, Aaron Wiggins, Isaiah Joe only had six points last night, but the two shots that he made were big. They were at a time where they, where they were up eight or nine points. These are momentum plays. These are momentum swings, and they're getting that from guys that are ninth and tenth in their rotations, and that's a huge credit to OKC. You know, I watched one game this year. They played ten guys in the first quarter. <laughs> no other team has had a blueprint like that where you'll put ten guys on the floor in the first quarter. That is an AAU style of play, and it's never worked in the NBA it's never worked at this level of play until now for the Oklahoma City Thunder, man. So Jalen Williams having the, the breakout year that he's having outside of not mentioning the Chets, outside of not mentioning the SGAs. They have four or five other guys that are making their names. They're becoming household names throughout the run in this playoff, in these playoff runs, in these playoff series. That's just incredible for Oklahoma City and their fan base. It's also just such a good fit. You got a guy like Chet that's not a natural center that can step right. out, but he still provides like rim protection and shot blocking. We don't even talk about him anymore just because SGA and Jalen are so good, and he's unbelievable. And then a guy like Lou Dort, he is their version of Jaden McDaniels on the Minnesota Timberwolves, where Ant is so electric, Rudy's the defensive oh, player yeah. of the year. Kat, so we don't even talk about we don't talk about Lou Dort, and he is arguably the most valuable player on this in the series just because what he's going to do and how difficult he's going to make things on Luca and yeah. Kyrie when he's not guarding Luca he's guarding Kyrie yeah he's there he's matching the substitutions based on those two guys so whenever he's on the floor can you imagine being the guy that every time you're on the floor you have to guard Luca or Kyrie no and that's he's and he's gonna do awesome. it well like this yeah. he's gonna make threes he's such a valuable piece and your name is Lou Dort right well it's not it's something his, his it's name like is Lou, Lou uh, yeah it's, it's crazy. crazy but Lou Lou Dort is yeah. fun. and Lou by the way speaking of um <laughs> hot take your camera's crooked you can put the picture back up. Yeah. Uh, the MVP. Well, listen, it's totally I'm not in charge. I'm not in charge of the camera. I know. I was like, I realized it as you were as you were talking, and now everyone's going to realize it. Uh, 